Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the Laplace transform of the delta function, that is the impulse function, where this impulse function is defined as a limiting case of the rectangular pulse function. That is, the impulse function delta of t is defined as limit epsilon tends to 0 f epsilon of t, where f epsilon of t is equal to 1 by epsilon for values of t between 0 and epsilon and 0 elsewhere. So given the definition of delta function or the Dirac delta function or the impulse function as a limiting case of this rectangular pulse, we want to derive the Laplace transform. That is Laplace transform of the impulse function. So this is equal to by using this definition, Laplace transform of the limit epsilon tends to 0 f epsilon of t. That is, and from a previous video, we learned that the Laplace transform of f epsilon the Laplace transform of the function f epsilon of t is given by 1 minus e power minus epsilon s divided by epsilon into s. So by using this result, we can derive the Laplace transform of the delta function of the impulse function as limit epsilon tends to 0 Laplace transform of f epsilon of t. We can take this limit outside of the Laplace transformation because the epsilon is independent of the values of s and t. Therefore, we can rewrite the Laplace transform of the limit of the function as limit epsilon tends to 0 of the Laplace transform of the function f epsilon of t. Now, by using this result, we have limit epsilon tends to 0. 1 minus e power minus epsilon s divided by epsilon into s. Now by using the Taylor series expansion of the exponential function e power x is equal to 1 plus x plus x square over 2 factorial plus x cube over 3 factorial and so on. That is, this is an infinite series which can be written as summation n equal to 0 to infinity x power n divided by n factorial. Now by using x equal to minus epsilon into s, we have the Laplace transform of delta of t is equal to limit as epsilon tends to 0, 1 minus, we use the definition of this exponential function in terms of Taylor series, that is, we use the Taylor series expansion of the exponential function given here as summation n equal to 0 to infinity and x is replaced by minus epsilon s power n divided by n factorial and the denominator is epsilon into s. Now by writing the first two terms of this infinite series we have limit epsilon tends to 0 1 minus the first term is clearly for n equal to 0 the first term is 1 and for n equal to 1 we have minus epsilon s minus epsilon s divided by 1 and then we have the summation n equal to 2 to infinity n equal to 2 to infinity minus 1 power n into epsilon s power n divided by n factorial and then we have epsilon s in the denominator clearly the ones cancel each other and then we have limit epsilon tends to 0 and the first value is clearly equal to minus or minus plus epsilon s and then we have minus then we can write the summation as epsilon times the sum n equal to 2 to infinity minus 1 power n epsilon power n minus 1 and we have s power n divided by n factorial divided by epsilon into s the first term is equal to epsilon by epsilon which is equal to 1 and so we can ignore the limit and then we have minus limit epsilon tends to 0 so we have 1 minus limit epsilon tends to 0 epsilon times the summation n equal to 2 to infinity minus 1 power n epsilon power n minus 1 s power n over n factorial and then we have epsilon times s in the denominator 
So this is equal to 1 minus, and we can cancel these two epsilons, and then you can clearly see that the second term is the limit, epsilon tends to 0, summation n equal to 2 to infinity minus 1 power n into epsilon power n minus 1, and then we have s power n minus 1 divided by n factorial. Clearly, this limit becomes 0 as epsilon gets close to 0. Therefore, the value should be equal to 1. That is, the limiting value should be equal to 1. That is, limit epsilon tends to 0. 1 minus e power minus epsilon s divided by epsilon into s should be equal to 1. Therefore, the Laplace transform of delta of t by using the definition of the impulse function as a limiting case of the rectangular pulse is equal to 1. Thanks for watching.